it's five o'clock on the wednesday and it's time for craig and roland's magic review show i'm craig i'm roland welcome back to another review show right here on magic tv and uh yeah thank you very much we've just come back from blackpool haven't we yes you'll have to excuse ron he's picked up a bit of a cough while he's been away in blackpool um but yeah we're back with another review show we're looking at five products this week and there's some incredible stuff that we're looking at isn't there some really 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 good tricks on this week's show so without further ado we're going to get straight into it yeah, yeah. and we're going to start off with, with kicker. are we starting with kicker yeah let's start with kicker. with kicker okay so first up we have kicker changing deck it's the kicker changing deck it's a color changing deck by jordan victoria and uh, this is described as the back of a signed card changes colour twice and a finale is unexpected. Uh, easy to do, use your favourite deck. Now, uh, I'll leave it up to you to decide whether that's an accurate statement or not. I'm going to start off by performing Kicker so you can see exactly what it looks like and then we'll talk about what we think. Here we go. Okay, so I've got Rylan behind the camera. He's going to help me with the trick. Is that all right, Ryan? Yep. Good stuff. So I've got a pack of cards, yeah? Yep. 52 yep. cards. Now, I'm only going to use two cards in this deck. I'm going to use the Eight of Clubs. That's that one right there. And I'm going to use the Eight of Spades. That's that one right there. Okay? Yeah. Uh, eight of Clubs and the Eight of Spades. These are the two cards that I'm going to use. Can you see them there? Okay? Yep. Good stuff. And you're going to pick a card. So any card that you like the look of, which one do you want us to go past? Queen of Spades. That one there? Yes. You sure? The rest of the deck goes here. And I want you to remember, you could have picked any card, right? Yeah. Now, I'm going to pop your Queen of Spades right there in between the two eights. Can you see that? Yep. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to spread them out so you can uh, you can see them. Can you see them right there? Yeah. Now, I'm going to do a uh, observation test. Look at the backs of the cards for three seconds. One, two, three. So the observation test is very simple. Ryland, what colour were the backs of the cards? Wood. Are you sure? Yeah. You're positive? Yeah. What colour was the Queen of Spades? Blue. So you missed the fact that it changed red. I mean, most people do. That's absolutely fine. Let's try that again. The Queen of Spades is red. What colour is the Queen of Spades? Red. Well, it is red, but it's actually uh, it's actually a, uh, a magic circle, deep red and black. And the reason is I've actually been able to turn your Queen of Spades into the magic circle logo which is amazing but check this out because if i take that magic circle card and put it on the deck and i snap my fingers just like that every single card in the deck turns into the magic circle logo and uh, and i think that is very magical okay so there you go that's kicker and um what do you think of it it's all right i think it's good it's okay it's not bad the um it comes with a couple of gimmick cards that allow you to um, do the... I mean, the, the main thing that you're buying with this is you're buying that moment. Because the, the actual colour-changing deck kicker has been around since time began. You know, I mean, uh, it's very similar to Paul Curry's colour-changing deck and a million other colour-changing decks in that you're taking a couple of cards out, thus proving that the deck is apparently blue doing something with them and then when you get back you've got a color change you know there's a million different routines like that so what you're actually buying here uh is you're buying the gimmick cards that come with this that enable you to do the little sandwichy thing at the beginning yeah. where you take out the two black eights you take out a card you have it signed it goes in between the two black eights uh, you show that it's blue backed you then shake it and you show it's red backed and then when you spread them out, it's changed again into a completely different back design, which you can then um, uh, change the rest of the deck through to yeah. that same back design. Yeah. And they say use your own deck, and you can use your own deck as long as the faces look the same as a standard bicycle deck. So you, you showed me it using a white cohort deck, and that did not look the same. No, well, when I was practicing, I used a white cohort deck, and that didn't really look too similar, so that kind of gives the game away. But in the actual performance, I, I didn't do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, here's, here's what it is. I, I do like it. The, the tutorial is about 17 minutes long and there was no live performance, but you know, it is what it is. I don't expect that much these days. Um, but there was no live performance. It's a 17 minute tutorial. It explains everything in great detail. I'm just a little bit uninspired by this, to be perfectly honest. I think it's good, but I think that the, the moment where the card changes and changes again, 
I think if you did a standard colour changing deck where you had one color cover card on top and you had somebody pick a card and you snapped and it changed and you had somebody else pick a card and you snapped and it changed and then you just changed the rest of the deck by putting those two cards on top. I think that people would watch that and then watch this and they wouldn't perceive any difference. I think that the, the, the addition, what they're adding here, the gimmicked cards, which allow you to do the little sandwich thing here, I, I think it's a nice addition, but I don't think it's a single trick in its own right. I think this is the sort of thing that many, many years ago would have been a routine on a series of routines uh, on an LNL DVD set. Or this would have been a card in a gaff deck that allows you to do this routine. And that's just one of the routines that you could do with the gaff deck because you get a ton. Of, I, I just don't think this is a single trick release in its own right. I don't know what you think. I'm kind of a bit uninspired by it. It's not yeah, going to... Yeah. It's not going to make me want to actually do this over any other colour changing deck that I've got. And and honestly, um, not that it's not good. I mean, it's good. I'm sure that this will get a good reaction. That's not what this is about. What I'm saying is a standard colour changing deck where you have the card, um, you know, th th let's just say, that, you know, the uh, the one that's taught on Michael and Mars Easy to Master Money series from memory, um, you've got a red blue double backer on top. So you've got a red deck, red blue double backer on top. Um, you, you, you know, do whatever shuffles you want to to prove that the deck's normal. They take out a card face up, you change it, you take another card out face up, you change it, you then take that card, show that it's the, 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 the back's changed, rub it on the top of the deck, stealing the double backer, that card turns over, you turn that over, and then the entire deck, and you're left with one. I just think that's a much better way of doing this. I just don't think this really adds anything. Um, and, and this is the sort of thing that if you read it in a book or you read it as a download or as an ebook or as part of a, like an online lecture academy or something like this, you go, oh, that's a nice thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. But as a standalone trick with its own gimmick, I just, I just don't think it's, yeah. it doesn't hit for me. Yeah. Um, it's okay, but I don't think it's better than any other colour changing deck out there. I think there's colour changing decks that are better, that add more to the plot than this. All you're getting with this is the moment where a card goes in between two sandwich cards, changes and changes again. And in all honesty, you could do that without sleight of hand. You could do that, very, sorry, you could do that without the gimmick, just by having four cards and you're holding a triple and you do a, a back spread, then you do another back spread and then you change the card. You could, you could do a similar thing with that actually. Um, without actually buying this trick, to be perfectly honest. It's okay. If you don't do a color changing deck, then this, this is great one to buy. Or if you saw the performance and you especially like that moment where the card changes in between the other two cards, then you might want to go for it. But I just don't think it's all that. I'm going to give it 50%. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. 50%? 50% from Ryan and 50% from me. Uh, not that great, but it's okay. If you're looking for a color changing deck, it's not terrible, it's just not for us. Yeah. Let's move on. Right, so next up, we have one of your favourite creators, Gustavo Riley, and he is back with the Santa's Pom Pom, an idea by Gustavo Riley, an effect for your Christmas show. Now, this is actually a really good idea for a Christmas show. What it is, is it's kind of a little bit like an egg bag. Yeah. But it doesn't use the same method as an egg bag. It's not like a Malini style egg bag, but it's a very similar type of effect in that you've got this green bag with like Christmassy decorations on the outside of it. But instead of making an egg appear, you're making a pom-pom appear. And you're making a pom-pom disappear and appear and disappear. Um, and then for the finale, the pom-pom vanishes and it comes back out the hat, uh, comes back out the bag, but then you shake and it turns into a hat and you put the hat on your head. That's basically the effect, right? There's some things I like about this. There's some things I don't like about this. And I want your opinion on this because you do the yeah. egg bag in your show, like yeah. every show. And and obviously, it is, it is every show. And obviously, people are going to draw comparisons between this and the egg bag. So let's have a look at a performance. This is actually not shot in the studio. Uh, Ryland actually filmed this on the way back from Blackpool. We looked at it in Blackpool, and on the way back, he actually filmed it on the train for his Instagram channel, didn't you? Yeah. So this is uh, uh, taken off Ryland's Instagram channel of the uh, Santa's, Santa's pom pom. Pam pom. pam. It says. But it's meant to be pom pom. It looks like an A. I think it might be an O. I don't know. Let's have a look at it, and uh, and then we'll tell you what we think. <laughs>
So uh, that went on your Instagram, and people loved it on Instagram. Yeah. You know, they, they really liked it, which uh, which says a lot. Now, what do you think of it? Because there's some things to like about I this. I think it's good, but I don't think I'll do it. Why won't you do it? Well, so first of all, there's going to be people that, are, that do the egg bag. What's the difference method from a method point of view? What's the difference between this and the egg bag? Um... It doesn't have a whole compartment to itself. It's just got like an area like that big. And with like the egg bag, it's the whole size of the bag, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, and um, it wouldn't make sense to squeeze it because it's a little pom-pom. That's my main problem with this. I think that one of the things that's so amazing about the egg bag is you're making a real egg appear in the bag. You're making an egg appear and you've squeezed the bag, you've hit the bag and... You can turn it inside out and you can get spectators to turn it inside out. But with this, it doesn't make sense to squeeze it. It doesn't make sense to hit it. You can turn it inside out, but how are you going to expect spectators to turn it out? Because they can't they're, turn they're it inside They're going to feel the Santa's pom-pom. Yeah, there's no way to hide it. It's not like an egg bag. Because when you turn it inside out with an egg bag, you're hiding it in your hand as you're holding the rim, aren't you? Yeah. But that won't work with this. So they right. can't turn it inside out. So, you know, you're looking at this little pom-pom and people might think, well, you can hide it in the hat which you can very, very easily. Um, and I think that's the major problem with this compared to the egg bag. I think it's more impressive making an egg appear. I watch you do this in your show and you're smashing it and you're hitting it and nobody thinks in the Squeeze audience. Squeeze. Yeah, you're squeezing it. Nobody in the audience thinks there's an egg in there. It's impossible. And all of a sudden you reach in and you pull out a real egg. And the moment at the end, which is obviously uh, from Jeff Hobson, where you reach in and you get the spectator to do it themselves and the spectator that's pulls the egg out. That's crazy. And you couldn't do that with this. I don't think you can. So, so the fact that you're using a pom pom. There is a big finish for this, though. With the hat. With the hat. Which is a nice idea. Yeah. It is. It is a good idea when you you shake it and you put it on your head. But put it this way: you've got quite a few shows over Christmas. Yeah. You could very easily take your egg bag out and put this in instead. But you said to me, "I don't want to put this in my show." Yeah. Why not? I don't think it's as good as the egg bag, to be honest. You don't think it's as good as the egg bag? No. Okay. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I think... you already know the percentage if you if you like it, but you can't do it. You, you don't want to do it. Yeah, I, I just think there's going to be people out there. There's going to be some kids entertainers yeah, it's, out it's, there. It's a nice idea, but I don't think I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, there's going to be some kids entertainers out there that are going to get a mileage out of this. There's no, It's a four-minute tutorial. So there's no live performance. There's no presentation to it or anything. I'm guessing you can make a really nice presentation yeah, about so going to the North Pole. He does it to himself. He does it to himself, yeah. but he doesn't have a live performance. Yeah. This is a kid's trick, really. And you'd expect there to be a live performance to kids, and there's not. I think if you, if you put some time into it and you thought about a presentation, something like, hey, did you hear about the time Santa lost the pom-pom off his hat? No, really, the Grinch stole it. This is the green bag. This is the Grinch's bag. Um, the Grinch has this bag because it's green like his skin. And, you know, he stole Santa's hat and or Santa's pom-pom uh, off his hat, which means Santa lost his magic powers. Something like that. And then the finale is Santa got his hat back and all the boys and girls could have. That's probably going to work. So for a kid's entertainer, it's an easy enough trick. There's nothing difficult about it, is there? Yeah. It's just... And so for kids, if you don't do an egg bag, maybe if you've never done an egg bag before, then this is great. But I, this is too similar to the egg bag. You couldn't do both in the same show. And I'd much rather do the egg bag in my show than this, and I'm sure you would as well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm going to give it 79%, which is the highest mark that I can give it yeah, if same. I'm not going to do it. So same. it's good. And I'm sure there's somebody watching this that could take this and really run with it. <laughs> it's just, I think it's limited compared to the egg bag. And I think you do have to, you're all right, buddy. Yeah. I think you do have to compare this to the egg bag. So 79% from me, 79% uh, from Ryland. Let's move on with another review. Yeah. Okay, so next up, we have Blank Thoughts by Card Shark. And yes. uh, uh, they say on the tutorial, this is a very quick tutorial, they're sitting down by a river or a lake or something like that, and they're teaching you the whole thing by the river, which is totally random. Uh, there's no live performance again, uh, which is unfortunately a worrying trend with a lot of tricks that are coming out now. But um, what we have here is we have uh, uh, a trick where, well, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to I'm going to let you see the performance yeah. of it first of all, and then we'll talk about what we think. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, I'm going to show you something with a pack of cards. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, 
you see magicians all of the time and they have somebody pick a card and they find that card, right? Yeah. I'm going to go further than that. What I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to have you think of a card and I'm going to make that card disappear from the deck. Would that be yeah. good? Yeah. Seriously, I'm going to make your card vanish from the deck. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. So first of all, I'm going to think of a card. Have a look. Just think of one. Yeah. Well, actually, just say stop. Stop. Can you look at that card for me? Yeah. You got it? Yeah. Fantastic. Now, I couldn't possibly know what that card is because you could have said stop any way you wanted to. I mean, they're all different cards. You could have said stop any time you wanted to. We're going to get back to your card in a minute. But first of all, I'm going to try and make your card and every other card disappear. Are you ready? Yeah. It happens when I snap my fingers and cut the deck. You see, when I cut the deck, what actually happens is every card vanishes from the deck. You see, the top card is now blank on both sides. The second card's now blank on both sides. So is the third, so is the fourth, so is the fifth. In fact, every single card in this deck is now blank. Look at that. Every single card. No fronts, no backs. The entire pack is completely and totally blank. Every single card has disappeared. But here's the thing. Your card is the only one that didn't disappear. Yours is the only one that vanished. And there's a difference between something disappearing and something vanishing. If something disappears, the ink vanishes. The ink goes away. See, it's not like these cards have gone. They're still there, but they've, they've, they've disappeared. Do you understand what I mean? The ink has disappeared. But your card vanished. It's no longer in the deck. And here's the weird thing. One card flew out the deck. It did six somersaults invisibly. And it landed right here inside my pocket. Inside my pocket, I've got one card and one card only. Now, you haven't said your card out loud. You haven't told anybody. No. For the first time, what was the name of your card? The King of Hearts. And I think that's about as close to a miracle as you're going to get. Okay, so that's what it is. In essence, it reminds me a little bit of Imagine by uh, Harry and Peter Nardi. Yeah. Just the whole idea of the, uh, you know, you're showing the cards and uh, uh, you're having them think of one and then the deck returns blank. Very different from a method point of view. They credit Get Sharky, which again is by um, um, uh, Card Shark, but with, uh, you know, blank cards instead. I really like this. In fact, as I said earlier on, we've just come back from the House of Secrets. Yeah. I did this every night in the House of Secrets, didn't I? Uh, yeah. And not even close up. I did it on stage um, to about 40 or 50 people in the audience. And it was really well received. I thought it was only two nights. No, I did it all three nights. Did you nights. do it on the third night? Yeah, I did it on the third night. Yeah, I did it all three nights. I mean, first night. Yeah, I did it on the first night as well, oh. yeah. Um, and it's really strong. I mean, it, it's very, very easy to do. When you saw me perform it at the table, I just did a cut. But when I was doing it on stage, I did a pass and uh, I made it look like the deck just turned blank right in front of their eyes. It was a really strong moment. You know, you show the cards. They can see that all of the cards are uh, are different. You have them stop at one. They stop at it. They look at it. You don't control it. There's no control. Immediately, you can make all of the cards disappear. You can show each card individually all the way through if you want to. It's not a rough and smooth thing at that point either. When you saw it, you thought it was rough and smooth. Yeah, yeah. but it's not rough and smooth so you can be really free with those cards there's no um uh sort of worrying about them yeah. separating or anything like that yeah. and then immediately once you've shown all of the cards are blank on both sides without fishing without asking them and they can think of more than one card you know it's a very when you riffle through you saw it they they see all the cards go past they stop wherever they want to yeah. without yeah. any uh asking at all you can pull the card out of your pocket and you can show it. Now, if you want to, you can even tell them what the card is ahead of time as well because you get all of that information. When they say stop, there's a very clever system that immediately tells you everything that you need to know to do the rest of the trick. So it's one of those routines. I, I The reason I tried this out in my show at, uh, well, it was your show, but I was comparing you on. The reason I did this as a compare piece at the House of Secrets is I thought, I thought you know what, this would be really nice for a stage routine. And it is, it is yeah. really strong, really quick, really visual. It's a great opening piece. If you're an MC or a compare, this is a great thing to do. What's an MC? Uh, Master of Ceremonies. It's somebody who, uh, you know, like when I was at Bradford and you were in the audience and there were lots of different acts on and I was comparing the acts on one at a time and in between comparing them on while they were resetting behind the scenes, I was doing uh, like a trick or whatever to, yeah, that's that's what a compare or an MC does. Oh. Yeah, what I did at that show. I thought that was a compare. Yeah, same thing. Compare Master of Ceremonies, kind of the same sort of thing, really. Um, but yeah, I, I, I thought, but also this would work in close-up. 
This would really, really work close yeah. up. This yeah, would work. Uh, one pocket, just stick the deck in the pocket and you're good to go. It's an instant reset as well. As you walk away from the table, you just give the deck one cut and you reset ready to go again. Nice and easy, uh, almost self-working. Yes, you can do a pass if you want to, to make the cards uh, blank. But if you don't want to do that pass, like in the performance you saw there, you just wanted to cut the deck, that's also fine. I love this trick. I think this trick is absolutely awesome. I'm going to yeah. give this 98%. Uh, this is something that I'm, in fact, um, I'm going to order a second one of these. When I see something that I really like, I, I, I know that I can use this. I do a lot of comparing gigs, as you know, and I know I can use this as a comparing gig. I know I can use this um, in, in a parlor show. I can use this for a small cabaret show. I'm definitely going to use this. And I don't want to be in a situation where I haven't got one. I'm going to give this 98%. I think it's brilliant whether you're a close-up worker, uh, stage performer. I think this would even work for a kid's show. You know, they get. it's not like you're picking a card and finding it. It's turning blank. I'm I trying to think of what um, my percentage would be. Go on. What would you, what would you like? Are you going to do it? I don't think I will. And I think I might actually give it 70 on. You don't really do much card magic, do you? No. Rye doesn't do really, really do much card magic. Um, which is fine. Okay. I'll, uh, do a bit of, I, I, I'll do a bit of it. You do some, but it's not your main but, thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a bit. Hmm. 79%. Yeah. So, 79% from Ryland. Um, and I'm more of a collector of decks. I like collecting. <laughs> I know. I know you are. 79% from Ryland. Uh, 98% from me. This is a really good trick. Uh, if you want a really good card trick that's very easy to do, this is the one to go for. And if you're looking for something to throw in your case, uh, that will play big, this will play big as well. So next up, uh, I want to talk to you about an item that you can only get directly from Cody Fisher. Now, anybody who's been watching this channel for any length of time will tell you that Cody Fisher is one of my favourite magicians. I love Cody. Um, I do a lot of his stuff. You do Cody's comedy book test in your show, don't you? Yes. Um, uh, you know, he's, he's just brought out so much amazing stuff over the years. Well, this is called The Impossible Box 2 by Cody Fisher. And uh, just like in the previous routine, I did this all three nights, didn't I, in the house, at the uh, House of Secrets. Yes. This is how I was opening up the show before I compared Ryan and Don. Uh, and this is incredible. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to perform this one. You wanted to get one of these as well, didn't yeah, you? This I, is I'm so going to perform this one. You're going to perform it? Yeah. <laughs> I've just done it the last three nights. Uh, I'm going to do it. Okay, okay. I'm going to do it. Okay. Uh, let's get a performance of Ryan and doing The Impossible Box. Two. Okay, so, Dad, have you got a coin? You did tell me to bring one. I have one right here. 50 pig. Okay, now I've also got a sharpie here. Mm -hmm. Now what I want you to do is just sign the coin. Both sides? Yeah, if you want. Oh, that's the worst signature in the world, but there you go. Uh, yep, dry, and... Let that's me just better. show them. That's better. There you go. One signed 50 pence piece. Okay, so, we've got a sign. Now what I want you to do is I want you to watch this. We've got the coin here. Watch. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Oh my gosh! Where did it go? Look, I'll get something impossible. Watch this. Yeah, it's the impossible. Yes. Just moving stuff out the way. We have this. Oh, and I Whoa. also need this. What's this? It's a. Uh, well, what's this? Well, it's um ball of wool inside a see-through box with elastic bands around it okay well, there's a little hole in top on the top of the box so we can um take the wool out so what i'm gonna do is we're gonna unravel the wool here okay so i don't even know how to use this i'm just gonna have a look. it's there it's there there's a there's a little clip there okay and that's oh, yeah, what clips it. in place there you go okay so i think what you're gonna do is you're just gonna roll it around like this you are unraveling the ball of wool this is going to take a while. Well, while you're unravelling the ball of wool, why don't you tell everyone a joke? Um, what did the zero say to the eight? I don't know, Ryan. What did the zero say to the eight? Nice belt. Look, which goalkeeper can jump higher than a crossbar? Which goalkeeper can jump higher than a crossbar? Yeah. I don't know which goalkeeper can jump higher than a crossbar. All of them. Even me. What? Crossbar can't jump. Oh my gosh. Have you got another joke? Um, who invented the arc? Who invented the arc? 
Go on, who invented the ark? I have no idea. <laughs> Please tell me you've got some better jokes than that. What did the lettuce say to the tomato? I, I don't know. What did the lettuce say to the tomato? Let us get to together. Let us get together. Let us get together. I think you told that joke wrong. I think it's meant to be what did the bacon say to the tomato. I think that's what it is. So not only are you telling bad jokes, but you're telling <laughs> bad jokes wrong. wrong. Okay, fair enough. But we're not even halfway there. You're doing well. You're doing well, considering you've never done this before. Can you solve a cube for everyone? I haven't got a cube. Run this. No, I can't solve a cube. I'm thinking what might happen is we might actually speed this part up because it's taking so long. I'll tell you a joke. What was Piglet doing with his head down the toilet? Everyone knows that one. Looking for poo. It's a classic. It's a great joke. Why does Tigger smell? He plays with poo. I know you. You do as well. That's why you smell, to be honest. Thanks. You're the one that's taking forever unraveling some wool. You're the one that plays with poo. Yeah. Okay, so we have finally unraveled this ball. That's why I hate wool. It takes so long to unravel. Carry on. But there's a silver box. Mm -hmm. Covered by elastic bands. Yes. That was inside a ball of wool. Yes. And in, um, which was inside a seafood box. Yes. Which was covered in elastic bands. Yes. I want you to open it. You want me to open it? Yeah. Take the elastic bands off. One elastic band. One elastic band. Two elastic bands. Three elastic bands. Four elastic bands. No, five elastic bands, that is. Six elastic bands. And inside, there's one see-through box. Yes. No, not see-through. That's see-through, which is silver. Yeah, which is also wrapped up with elastic bands. Which is also wrapped up with elastic bands, correct. I do like the pleasure of telling what everyone wants inside. It can't be. <laughs> it can't be. <coughs> There it is, everyone. It's my signed 50p right there inside the metal case. How cool is it? That's amazing. Silver box, inside elastic bands, inside a ball of wool, inside a see-through box, covered by elastic bands, with a coin, enjoy all of it. Amazing. Okay, good performance, Ryan, right? especially Thanks. as you've never done that before and you literally just watched me do it in the House of Secrets. Um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, that's uh, Impossible Box too. Um, now, when I was doing it, we, we fast forwarded during the unwinding thing because it took uh, quite a while. However, um, one thing that I want to point out how I was actually doing it. And, and the thing with Cody's uh, instructional tutorials is you see a full live performance of Cody doing this to a real audience. And the tutorial leaves no stone in turn. So you get to see Cody performing it live if you buy it. But from my experience, I've done it three times now on stage the last three nights. Uh, from my experience, um, you know it has a good reaction. What what I did is I now actually let me just backtrack. The difference between this and the second one, it, the first one, is the original Impossible Box was only designed for a coin, a little bit like what you used. Impossible Box Two is designed for a coin or a borrowed ring. So what I was doing in uh, in the House of Secrets is I was borrowing a ring, yeah, and I was using the Sands Mines Vanishing Ring Box. Now, uh, which is one of my favourite props to use when you're when you're borrowing a ring. If you don't know what it is, you borrow a ring, you put it in the ring box, you close the ring box, and you just put it down and immediately vanishes. So what I was doing in my show is I was borrowing a ring, and there was kids in the audience. I was getting a kid to bring the ring up to me. I was putting it in the ring box, and I was giving the kid the ring box to hold on to. Yes. So they, the, the ring is there, because when Ryland did it, he vanished the coin and then went to get the box. The ring is still there from their point of view. I then go into my case and I get the, the impossible box, which is that see-through box that you saw Ryland use a second ago. And I put that on a table next to the little girl. So she's holding the, um, she's holding the, the ring, apparently. And next to her is the impossible box. And she does the vanish herself. Um, and and yeah, there's this whole... Yeah, you turn it to open. 
and she opens it and the ring's gone and the look on her face was amazing she was like oh which 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 just plays brilliantly for the whole audience and then I give her the box and with the unwinding thing the only thing I was worried about when I saw Cody do this is is this going to take too long how am I going to cover this and what I love about this is I use the William Tell Overture so I was like, can I have some wool unwinding music, please? And as they, I was unraveling the, uh, uh, the, um, the ball of wool as the music was playing and the whole thing was just really built big and I timed it so that just as I got to the end of the William Tell Overture, I'd open, I'd unraveled the wool, I'd unwrap the, uh, the, the see-through box, I'd unwrap the, uh, the, the metal box, and the little girl was holding the ring in the air as the crescendo of the song came up, and it was just brilliant. It literally tore the house down, didn't it? Yeah, um, it did. I love this trick. It's, it's, it's a trick for a stage performer, it's a trick for a cabaret performer. You do more stage shows than close-up, yeah. You said you definitely want to put this in your stage show. Yeah. It's really easy to do. Like you saw with Ryland, he just did a vanish. You can just vanish it and then go and get the box from your cabaret case. Now, if you don't work out of a case, uh, Cody gives you like a gift bag and he gives you a way of doing it. So the gift bag's on the table the whole time. So you bring out the gift bag, you put it on the table, you borrow a coin, you're holding the coin here. And, uh, and, and just in the action of just moving behind the gift bag, You've loaded it into the uh, into the box, which is another nice way of doing it. I do actually prefer the uh, vanishing ring uh, by Sans Mind. I think that's the best way to do this, or some method thereof. Maybe a ring vanishing hanky, any ring by Richard Sanders, Lord of the Hanks by Cody Fisher. Anything would like that would work. But I like the idea of them still holding onto that ring while I bring the box into view. It's very, very easy to do. It's not difficult at all. Uh, the tutorial goes through everything with a fine tooth comb and uh, Cody explains it brilliantly. There's a live performance on the project. Um, if you can do a vanish, you can do the trick. And it's one of those routines that packs small and plays big. Everything packs down into a very small amount. It takes about five minutes to set up because you've got to wrap the box up with the ball. It takes about five minutes to set up. But once you set it up, it's there. And, uh, and it's, it's an incredible moment. Um, I think this is as strong as Bill and Lemon. Um, I think this is great. Uh, I'm gonna give this 100%. I know this is gonna stay in my show. I love it. I want to give a big shout out to Cody Fisher. He's one of my favorite magicians and, and this is really good. What are you giving it? Um, well, considering that I'm gonna do it, I think I'm gonna give it... Um, Uh, 95%. 95%. You're definitely going to put it in your show as well. So 95% from Ryland, 100% from me. Really, really good. Let's get on with the next review. So the final review is, uh, it came out about six months ago, but we want to give a shout out to uh, Lee Alex. Now, I've mentioned this in a 5x5 five five that I've filmed recently, but I wanted to actually put it on the review show because I want more people to know about this. This is the Devil's Hank 2 by Lee Alex. And we've never really looked at The Devil's Hank by Lee Alex, have we? And uh, and then we needed, in your new show, we wanted a moment where we were gonna vanish a cube. Do you wanna talk everyone through it? Okay, so um, we're going to do a blindfold cube solve and vanish. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically I had a cube, mm -hmm. I had a blindfold, and I had a stool. I sat on the stool, and um, I had the blindfold, I put the blindfold on, and I was starting to mix the cube up. Mm -hmm. Well, they were mixing the cube up. I was trying to solve the cube. Blindfold. Blindfolded. Blindfolded. And I did it. And then I said, it's all in your imagination. I vanished the cube using the devil's hank. And then I vanished the stall. But using, the side, bla using Blake's. Yeah, using Blake's. Uh, Blake, Voigt's and vanishing stall. But we thought that the, um, the vanishing stall might be a bit too much. It was overkill, wasn't it? Yeah. I think that because every night you did this, it blew the roof off the building. Yeah. Like the the the, the, the blindfold cube solve was amazing because you, you gave the cube out and they were mixing it through the show, weren't they? Yeah. And then you took it back. And so we had this really nice music playing while you were solving <laughs> the cube. And when he solved it, great reaction. And then when he vanished, the, and then he's like, hey, but the whole thing's in, the, in your imagination. Watch this. He vanished the cube. That got a great reaction. And then the stool got a good reaction as well, but I was like, you know what? After the after the cubes vanished, I think that's all you need. I don't think you need yeah. 
the stool vanishing either. So we just we just stuck for that for the rest of the nights. But um, yeah, I mean, the way we looked into various different ways of vanishing a cube and the way that we ended up on is the Devil's Hank 2. And it's amazing. If you've not seen the Devil's Hank 2 by Lee Alex and you're looking for a way of vanishing anything, like a big object, then you want to get this. We are worried that the devil that with a Rubik's Cube, you'd see a bulge in the cloth or something, but you don't see anything, do you? No. Literally, from the audience's point of view, you drop a cube inside a... Uh, uh, and Lee, a Alex is, um, Lee Alex is going to make me one that says Rylan. Yes, he is. Yes, he's making you a custom devil's handkerchief at the moment, which is just brilliant. But let's have a look at a performance of you just doing it close up. This is not performance from the show, obviously, but this is just uh, a, a quick performance of Rylan doing it to camera. So you can see just how good this looks, even close up to the camera. You'll see how good the devil's hank looks. Okay, so I'm going to tell you how to solve a cube like this. I'm going to tell you how to solve a cube like that. Now, how it's done, it is all in your imagination. Look. Like this. Look, grab all the corners here. As you can see, the cube is going to go into the little bag that I've made. Now, it's all in your imagination now there you go the devil's hank is really a utility device that you can use to do anything um you know if you've got something in your show that you need to make disappear use the devil's hank uh, but i've never considered using it to make something as big as a cube disappear and maybe all hanks won't work but the devil's hank too absolutely does so a big shout out to lee alex it's an amazing prop and uh yeah it gets 100 percent from me what about you 100%? Yeah. 100% from Ryland, 100% from me. If you're looking for a really good quality Devil's Hank, they're available from all Magic Dealers, and he's got them in a variety of different colours, red, blue, black, tons of different colours. We've got the black one. We've got the black one. Or you can actually get um, him to make you a custom one. Just reach out to Lee Alex, and he'll make you a custom one as well. you have to pay him more? You have to pay to get the custom ones yeah. made, yeah. But, so. uh, they are amazing. So yeah. worth every penny if you're looking for some method to vanish something in your show. And that's no review show in the bag. That's no review show in the bag. That's no review show in the bag. It is another review show in the bag, guys. <coughs> Thanks once again for joining us right here on Magic <coughs> TV. Magic <coughs> TV. <coughs> we'll be back again next Wednesday with another review show. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't already followed Ryan on Instagram or fa uh, Facebook, please do so. Uh, he's absolutely smashing it on those platforms as he is on YouTube. And uh, if you want to follow us here on uh, uh, Magic TV, please do that as well. I'm going to be back again tomorrow with a bunch more videos. And if you want to join the Netflix, please go to www.thenetrix.cookies. www it's actually .com, but whatever. We'll be back again next week. Thank you once again for watching us. Uh, we'll see you again. I'm Craig. I'm Ryan. We'll see you again. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.